Welcome to the Golf Club 2019 Course Designer. In this Let's Build series, we're gonna be covering all of the aspects of designing and building a golf course. I did already do some landscaping, as you can see by the lake in the background, and I would highly recommend doing any major landscaping overhauls before you start laying out the course. This is my first course, so we do have a little bit of a learning curve here at the beginning, but I have been doing plenty of research, watching other YouTube videos, and reading on the forums on how to best create these holes. And hopefully in this series, I can take everything I've learned and summarize it nice and short for you. So this way you can get building faster. In addition to learning about the course designer itself, I've also been doing a lot of research on golf course design and architecture. I really feel like there is a lot to learn from real life courses and real life designers. So we will be co covering some real life principles for golf design. And here's a perfect example of one of the learning curves. I was trying to use the brush tool to form this tee box in the manner that I wanted to. And then I just kind of realized that the spline tool would be far faster to get the look I was wanting. Now there's a few ways to go about starting that very first hole, and oftentimes this can be the trickiest part. So a couple ways to go about this would be to use your landscape and try to see where a hole would naturally fit. This is often what designers will do in real life, and many courses built nowadays, they try to move as little earth as they can. Applying that principle in game will help your holes look more natural. Another way to go about building a hole is to already have a set kind of layout in your head. So I found a small opening through the trees that would support the layout or a similar layout of a first hole of a course near me. Since I had played that hole many of times throughout my life, it was a great place for me to start because it offered something familiar that I could design from. I also wanted to start off the course with a fairly simple hole Nothing too challenging off the tee or too challenging coming into the green. The difficulty of holes and how you space that out throughout the round of golf can really add or subtract from how your course plays. I believe it would be a really easy trap to fall into to make holes as hard as possible and to really try to make them challenging since this is just a video game. But in the same sense, you might be stripping the fun away from the holes. <laughs> But of course, you will want your course to be challenging because if it's not challenging, then it's not going to be fun. So one way to kind of mix this up would be creating perhaps an easier hole and then a more difficult hole or having one hole that has a hard tee shot, but a fairly forgiving approach to the green. And then the next hole would have a wide open tee shot, but maybe a small, well-protected green. Perhaps later we'll go more into detail about how making a course challenging but fun at the same time. I'm sure you've noticed I've been using this measure tool a lot. And I, what I did was I went into Google and searched for average fairway widths, average green sizes, and that sort of thing. So I would have a really good starting point uh, just until we get used to the designer. And then we can start making a little bit more creative decisions. But I think to start out with, sticking with like an average fairway width of around 30 yards is a really good place to start. Oftentimes in design programs, you kind of can lose track of size relevance. So since you're not actually down there as the player and you're in this sky view, something that's 60 yards wide might only look like 20 yards wide or you might make a fairway that's thin and it ends up being way too thin or you might make a hole that's 600 yards without even realizing how long it really is. I would really recommend before placing any hole layout, just throw down some measurement tools. Make sure that your tee shot's gonna be landing around the 280 yard range or so from the tips. And you might also wanna measure for roll out maybe going to like 320 or so just to make sure that the drive has a nice land zone. After that you can just draw a second measure marker going towards where the green might be and depending on how you want the hole that could really vary. And since you want to add some variety to your holes 
So on par fours, you can have a multitude of different lengths on your approaches. So if the last hole was say 135 yards into the green from the optimal drive land, then maybe the next hole you might wanna do 180 or even longer into the green. But a big focus that I have when I am measuring is I want holes to require different clubs. So sometimes I'll want a favorable tee shot to be like a three wood or a five wood. And then a favorable approach, maybe have some holes where you get to use a wedge and try to get it really tight. And then other holes, you've got to actually take a really long iron. The main point I'm trying to get you to take away here is to not let your golf course become repetitive. So moving along, I wanted to get another point that I think is pretty crucial for new designers. And it's something that uh, I do differently than I have seen any other uh, tutorials and that sort of thing suggest. As you can see with this green, I only have six spline points. And I think this is a huge thing. So most people that I've seen designing, they place tons of these spline points all over and they kind of try to trace the outline and the shape they want by placing a multitude of those handles or as the, I mean, the spline points. But if you utilize the handles on the spline points, then you can get away with less points. By using the fewer amount of points, you leave yourself open to being able to re-manipulate uh, your fairway or your green much more easily than you would if you had hundreds of these points that you would have to move. As the series continues, you will see this backed up many times where I drastically change the look of a green or a fairway by just moving a few handles. There really isn't any downside to using less points. I mean, there is one minor one, but we'll cover that later as it's a very minute detail that some of you guys might not be bothered with, but some people might. We will talk a little bit more in detail later about how to manipulate these spline points and handles to get uh, the shape you want and the smoothness of the fairways and the greens. I would say perhaps the biggest learning curve in this designer is the sculpting. <laughs> it is uh, something where you're just gonna have to play around with it and kind of get a feel for how the ground reacts and you can see that each shape has a faded zone and that's kind of like the blend area so that's where the ground's going to try to blend with the ground beside it it has definitely taken me some time but i think now i'm starting to get pretty used to the sculpting tools and we will definitely be talking about some sculpting tips and tricks later as well and once we get our tee boxes squared away, it's finally time to give this hole a quick play test. After a play test, we can better gauge how wide our fairways are and how the hole is actually playing out. And a quick tip, um, when you are doing these play tests, after you hit a drive, uh, if you just go to the start menu, there's a option to rewind the shot. And that's normally not there. Maybe it is in some of the game modes. But this is extremely helpful for testing different clubs off the tee or different lines down the fairway. So another really huge point I totally forgot to mention when we first started this video is that my mindset going into this start of a design. Uh, I'm not trying to build the perfect course. I'm not trying to make everything look really good with the extras and bits and that sort of thing. We're definitely going to get to that later, but for the first bit, um, being new to the designer, if you're also new, I would suggest doing this as well. Just kind of push through and get through this first course as fast as you can, but also while maintaining, you know, doing the best that you can. There's a particular college study that's kind of always stuck with me, and they had two groups of people, and they told them to both make clay pots. They told one group to spend four hours making one absolute best pot they possibly could. And they told the other group to take the same amount of time and just make as many pots as they could. And the end result was the people who made more pots, their last few pots ended up being much better than the group that was told to just make one pot. And what you can take away from this is 
that the more you do something, the more you learn it and the better you become at doing that. So with this first course, we're just trying to work through it, learn the different aspects so that when we come to build the next course that might really be the course that we're wanting to build, we'll know what we're doing and we'll be able to execute uh, what we have inside of our head. So that is exactly what we are doing with this course. We're just gonna be building through and getting it done and learning as we go. And so for this first initial round, uh, I also am not really trying to make the hole complete yet. I just wanna get the layout for the hole so that we can move on to the next hole and we can get our whole entire layout and then we can start adding in some of the rough and maybe more bunkers and that sort of thing. A second reason for doing this is like I mentioned earlier about you don't wanna be repetitive with your course. So by doing all the layouts first, we make sure that we're one, not being repetitive. And then also if I decide to go back and edit a hole because I really liked the next hole better, but it was causing some repetitive feel to it, then we won't be undoing a lot of um, you know, our hard work that we did. Even though by using few spline points, we'll be able to manipulate and move and correct stuff really quickly, it's still never fun to have to undo what you spent hours doing. So in this last few minutes, I just wanna really kind of talk about my thought process behind this specific hole layout. Uh, I did want a slight dog leg and I didn't want the player to be able to really cheat the corner. So that's why we have those trees there. And I also didn't want you to be able to push too far straight down the fairway. Uh, if you do put a draw on the ball, then you can avoid the bunker. For the approach shot, I wanted to make sure you had to carry all the way to the green since it was gonna be a slightly shorter shot. Also with the shape of the green kind of being a diagonal shape here with a separate kind of level, that creates the inner fairway being an ideal line to the right side of the green. And then also going to the left side of the green, the ideal line would be on the right side of the fairway, closer to the bunker. By having these little differences, it allows the player to choose the ideal position to land off the tee. This adds uh, some strategy to the hole, but in both strategies, it doesn't take away from the player actually being able to hit the green. You can still hit it from either side, it's just not quite as favorable. Now that we're basically done with the layout, it's time to get a little more extensive testing done. But before we jump into the testing, I just wanted to make a quick point. You saw I was deleting those brush marks uh, from the rough by the edge of the fairway. And I will say for starting out, just avoid the brushes. Uh, I haven't came across a situation yet where the brush was a better choice for me than the spline tool. So far, the spline tool has proved to be very versatile and I would recommend just getting used to it and using those over the brushes for now. Ooh, uh, nobody saw that. Uh, so yeah, on to uh, course testing. Yeah. So you wanna make sure you test each of your T positions and that sort of thing. Um, I haven't gone as far as this yet, but eventually I will be switching between the beginner, pro, and master clubs from each tees. I would really suggest going ahead from the beginning and setting up your tees like this. I uh, will be doing a quick research test just to see what the different distance um, for the driver on each of those sets of clubs. But this is just a game, and so we're not gonna have to accommodate for so many different player skill levels. It's more gonna be based around which club set you're using and making sure that you can get the beginners and the master clubs in the same relative landing zone on the course. Because after all, if a player is unable to achieve the designated landing zone, then the hole isn't playing the way it was intended to be played. Oh, uh, how'd this get in here? It's a little sneak peek of the next hole. But with that leaked information, that's gonna be it for this episode. If you're looking forward to learning a little bit more about the course designer, go ahead and hit subscribe. We still have so much to cover in this series. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.